Hi there. I was about to um, do one more step of weathering on this sort of phone case data pad. And I, uh, I was going to do a technique that um, I don't always do. In fact, I only started doing it maybe six months ago, uh, which is Fuller's Earth Weathering. And Fuller's Earth is very simply just like a very fine powder that uh, gets all over you, that they use all over in the movie effects industry and also so many other places. It's health and beauty and a bunch of stuff. But basically, it's a very clean dust that can come in a bunch of different colors. And um, what effect it gets that other weathering doesn't, like acrylic wash weathering, is it gets a very matte, dusty look that mimics kind of a real world um, effect. And like here, I did it on this. So it's this like kind of dust in the cracks that doesn't look like paint. It looks like real dust because it is real dust. And the trick is you can just dust this thing and get it on there, which is fine. It'll stay for a long time. Um, or you can try and do it in a way that will make it a little bit more permanent. And what we're trying to mimic is in the real world, if you have something that's gotten dusty and you rub it off with a rag and there's still dust in the cracks. Actually here, I have this power drill, right? This has been in my shop. I use it all the time. And in these threads and in these cracks is a layer of powder that's going to be really hard to clean out. And a lot of things get that look, you know, your dashboard of your car, an old boom box, like things that are black will often show this layer of dust in all the cracks. It's really hard to get out. And this method also works really good on dark props, like a blaster, because if you do an acrylic wash weathering, like it, nothing's really gonna show. It's just black on black and it's transparent. This, it's kind of a, a, um, a satin finish, but there are like matte corners filled with kind of whitish dust um, that really show that this thing has been handled, especially this grip. Like that's the kind of thing you see all over in the real world is something like this grip will get dust down in those channels and it'll never come out. So um, Fuller's Earth Weathering is really good at dark props. It's also good when you want to give just a couple of details a little bit more grime. Um, like this helmet was acrylic wash weathered. Everything was neat. But I went back in later once I did this and added a little bit of Fuller's Earth like in these deep recesses just to give it like a kind of chalky extra level of grime um, that works really well. So I'm going to show you a couple ways to get it to stick. There are lots of other methods. Lots of people use something like hairspray to give it like a, a you know, something for the, the earth to stick to. Some people um, just do it dry and then reapply it every few years because that works too. Um, but I came up with a method using an airbrush um, or a paintbrush to get some really targeted spots because hairspray, the problem for me was that it coated everything including things I didn't want to. I would never want to use it on something like that had a visor because <laughs> that hairspray would get on that visor. You'd have to tape it off. But I used an airbrush to just target tiny spots. And I first used it on this helmet case to try and get some of these like little corners. And I really figured out like what look I was trying to get and how to get it by, by layering it a little bit. So I'm going to spray on some of this matte varnish which is just like a clear coat but it's matte and just hit spots I want to hit put dust to stick to those spots and then often I'll hit it again to seal those to get kind of a wetter um, kind of mud look um, and then you can put a little bit more on top and get it dusty again you can wipe it off you have a few minutes so uh, let's get started before you do any weathering make sure you think about what you're trying to do with the weathering and think of why it would be there and what would happen to create it. For instance, think of like if this character is always in a certain environment, pick Fuller's Earth colors that make sense for that environment. Um, if they, if an object is held in the hands, you want to think about how those would interact, either wiping off all the grime or adding grime around the hands. Um, don't use like a rust colored powder unless you're near something that is rusty. I did that on this bucket like most of it was done with this kind of gray fuller's earth but right at the top where these screws are I did a little more rust just because those are made of iron and they have a little rust in the cracks so that's the only place that's rusty on this one because it's the only place that made sense 
um, I did a whole video on the theory and the idea of like how to think about weathering and you know how to not make it too repeating looking and to not have it excessive for no reason to give it irregularity to have spots of clean and it's mostly about thinking of how that object is interacted with and you can see that video up here and that should apply to any type of weathering it's sort of the thought process behind doing it that will give your weathering more of like a natural realistic look and Star Wars does that really well. They really think about why something would be a certain way um, when they do the weathering. So, um, like, on a prop like this helmet, um, you know, it didn't make sense to have, like, dusty weathering anywhere. There's other types of weathering. But I did add some in the back because these kind of vents just seem like they might get dust trapped in them. So I put a little bit in there. Um, for this soft part, I can take some of this kind of kind of middle brown color because that's sort of like, I live near Redwoods, and that's the color of the dirt. Uh, under a redwood tree it, it's kind of like it's not red brown like rusty but it's like a a redder middle brown so I can just rub those I'm gonna burnish it into this fabric because I didn't have this stuff back when I made this originally and now I've got kind of two kind of dirt marks from where a soldier might have dirty gloves and pull their helmet on after a break um, so that's why I would put it there that's an example of like thinking about why and where I wouldn't just put it everywhere Probably not a lot on the top because I'm not like touching the top as much. You usually grab the helmet from the sides. Um, maybe the bill though. That makes sense because you do grab your bill of your cap and adjust it while you're walking and marching. So I'm going to give it a little bit just from some dirty hands, touching that bill, my right hand, maybe my left hand too, just from like grabbing it and that kind of stuff. Just think about the why and when it would happen and that will tell you where to put it. So think about it and plan your weathering before you jump into it. Now Fuller's Earth is not any kind of special powder really, it's just very clean. Um, you can use anything that's dusty, you can even use real dust, but often it's too chunky and irregular and can have some weird stuff in there. Um, so that's why people tend to use this stuff. Um, it's also, you know, if, if you can't find a color that you like, because I have four colors and I've mixed some of them, but if you need a specific color to indicate a certain kind of weathering, um, a lot of people I've heard take chalk pastels and use a file and grind them up into fine powder and use that. So if you need a very specific one that you can't mix with what you have or other colors aren't available to you, just grind up chalk pastels um, from an art store. Those are really easy. Um, this stuff is also used in... Uh, fabric weathering and what's great about Fuller's Earth specifically is that it's washable so you can you know put it on fabric to get a dirty look um, and it's sort of temporary once you wash it it'll come out just like a fine dust would um, so a lot of people use it in fabric weathering it grinds itself in you don't need to use any kind of medium or anything to really make it stay um, and you know you can use it to get certain effects or like this shop apron is all dusty and white from grinding resin prints um, if I wanted to get that look on this shirt because it, I wanted to look like it had been worn at the same time you know I can use some like white fuller's earth and it will just kind of grind into those fabrics it's kind of fingerprints are not ideal but you know, you get the idea. You can really, you can temporarily make like anything have a little bit of color with Fuller's Earth. Adding the Fuller's Earth weathering is something you do usually at the very end. And I will do it after I clear coat a prop. You don't have to clear coat every prop, but if you do, you want to do that before the Fuller's Earth weathering because you don't want to have that dust coated with something that will make it not matte and chalky anymore so uh like this this binocular prop that i made um it had like acrylic wash weathering and then i clear coated it all which gave it that satin kind of shine to it and then i did the dust which has no shine which you can see inside that ring and like on these handles where you know it's like that geonosis dirt just in there and i wanted to keep that chalkiness mixed with the shine to give a variety of different surfaces and materials. When you have an object that has a mix of shine and matte, like it really gives it a real world um, feeling to it um, because that's how objects in our world get dirty and handled. And you know, there's parts of a car that are glossy and there are parts that are matte and 
and the dirt is usually matte. So I, I try and do that after the rest. So Fuller's Earth comes in a bunch of different colors. I got a nice little set from Trooper Bay that came with three colors. So it's kind of a white, a, a gray, and a rusty brown. And this rusty brown one is like really a strong color. Like if I rub it, it almost like paints like a rust color. So this one I've used um, sparingly. This yellow color, I got a giant bag from Amazon. People use it for health and beauty and a bunch of other stuff and it's so cheap. Um, which is also just kind of a neat color that's kind of off yellow. But often I will mix and then I'll dump my mixes in this pot, which I just kind of keep. So it's got a little bit of brown, a little bit of gray, a little bit of everything. You can mix and match. So like if I wanted um, some gray on this and some brown, you know, this, you can get a nicer color. That's like less, I don't know, less pure, more like dirt. So I, I just spilled some on here. So you can just like use it on its own. And a lot of people do this. And it stays, but as soon as it gets like blown, you know, it's, it's there, there's some dust in there, but it will come off. And um, over time, it'll definitely like go away. So we want to make sure that it, it stays. And that's what this airbrush medium is for. Now, if you don't have an airbrush, um, or you want to really target a spot, um, like I've done on something that has metallics and I don't want to spray, risk spraying any of that matte spray on that beautiful metallic. You can use a paintbrush and just hit tiny spots with the medium. Um, so I'll do that first just because it's the simpler technique. So these buttons on this, they're, I gave them a glossy finish. I wanted that glossy look. I don't want to hit this whole area with spray, but I kind of want some dirt around those buttons. So this is a good candidate for brush. So I just took some of this matte varnish, put it in a little tiny cup and I have a paintbrush and I can use that to get some of that right around where I want. So I'm gonna put some around this little screw and around these buttons and I can spread it. And this way I'm not worried about like getting too much of that matte varnish around Oh, I can just wipe it off. I'm not worried about too much of that matte varnish on the glossy part of those buttons, which would take away that glossy shine. So here I am just painting it around and you, let's see if we can see the, in the shine, see there's some of that wet stuff around it. That's what's gonna stick the dirt. You have a, a minute to get it on there. All right, now let's get some dirt. Um, I think on this, yeah, some of this kind of brown. So you just kind of sprinkle it where you want it to go. And rub it in there. This is actually already drying up, so I gotta get going quicker than usual. And you just do one area at a time. And you can see already, it's like really sticking just to that wet area. Then you take a rag and you rub it off just like normal. And then you can really like rub, like rough off any of those spots. Now, if it's leaving like a shape, like look at this shape around that red button. I didn't really want that. You can just take a little bit of water and like kind of re, cause that varnish is, is kind of water soluble. So you can just rub it and get a, a new look. Now, that, um, that dust that's stuck in those spots is now stuck pretty well. It was getting a little too grimy, so I just dipped this in a little bit of water and rubbed around. And now all of it's, all that's left is just some dust around those buttons. So next I'll show you how I use the airbrush. Um, the airbrush is really a nice controlled thing. I turn it way down to like 10 PSI. Um, now, one thing I've noticed with this is that when you're airbrushing and blowing 
at the pigment, it'll often blow back and stick in that little tip of the airbrush, which causes some clogs. So if suddenly you're not spraying anymore, now you know why. Um, so what you want is the tiniest bit of moisture coming out. So let me get a scrap here. We want just like the littlest bit of very controlled wetness coming out of that. So it's just got like that little, you can't even see it on here. You do it a bunch in one spot. So I can really control just like a little line of sh wet. And that's where I can stick the powder. So I can really get it in the spots I want, like this long crack. So here we go. So it looks dusty, and then when you blast it with the airbrush, you actually see what's really there. And you can hit it again on top and kind of seal in that dirt once you get it how you want it. Got it down in this trench, sprinkle a bunch of dust in there. Wipe it out, get it to where I want it to be. Now it's got some dust in there and I can leave it like that and it will stay. Um, if you want to get kind of a different look because it's very powdery. Um, you can hit it with the airbrush again, which will blow a lot of dust out. Always. But if you hit it on top with some more of that matte varnish, you get this kind of like more like wet grime look in there. It kind of seals it. It makes it look a little bit more like oily wet. Move this around a little bit. So I'll try and get another layer in on top. So I'm gonna loud. So if I keep building up layers of dust and then varnish, I'm just spraying it until it gets totally wet. Like you can see a little shine of the varnish and then getting a little more, more dust in there. So in this corner here, I've got this real like chalky dust in there and I want to kind of seal it to get it kind of wet looking. And that will give it that kind of oily rust in that corner. Um, so you can leave it powdery or you can give it that final coat of matte varnish again, which will give it a much kind of oily or grime look that I really like in certain spots. So either way works. I find the uh, things that are like really dark black like this, uh, that gray really pops. I used it on that blaster. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use my cup and just try and get some like right in these deep corners. Just paint on some of this varnish way in these corners and I'll wipe it back out, but that will just get a really nice kind of, you know, under the hood of some electronics doesn't get cleaned very well. This is the kind of thing that goes around the screen. 
So you'll see once I give this a little blow that we've got dirt all inside there, but when I blow, that's what's left. You can see everywhere I painted will have some of that dust in there. And then you take a, a rag and rub it back out. And if it's still too much, you can get your rag wet and really wipe away some of that stuff so that it's only in the very cracks. Just like what happens when you try and clean something, but you just can't quite get that dust out. That's the look we're trying to get. So there, now you can see it's just down in those little cracks. And I kind of like how it looks a little damp like that. So I'm gonna hit it with some of my varnish spray to make that look permanent. So that'll look good on there where there's just some grime inside there. I think I might wipe out some more to get it a little bit cleaner down in there. That's got a look that you can't get any other way. Best way to make it look dusty is to add some dust. So I've got some good stuff way up in these cracks. That's just the look I'm going for. And to get that, I'm just using a brush to just hit those areas around that would trap a bunch of that dirt. And then sprinkle my dust in there. And then wipe it, wipe it off. I think I kind of like the chalky dust, so I'm not gonna coat it again. And it's stuck to that powder. So that'll keep that look. So this piece of equipment, you know, it's it's been out in the field. It's got that look. That's what I love. Put a lot in this area, but I'm kind of losing these vents. So you can always, within a minute or so, I get it a little bit wet and rub it back off. Because that varnish is is like acrylic. You gotta you got a minute or so to really come back and undo any mistake, which is always nice. So now I got those vents back. Um, but vents, you know, often get really dusty if you've seen them anywhere in your car or anything else. So I love giving vents something inside just to give that real world look. For the outside of this, I want to give a little, because it'll be against the device here. I want to gonna give some around this lower edge. So we'll be super clean. So I got it wet with the airbrush, you can kind of see. Sprinkled dust. and kind of rub it off. So that's that kind of lower rim of dust where it gets close to the data pad. So even though I'm, I'm weathering them separate, I'm thinking about where it will go, which is here. And so that lower edge will be kind of harder to keep clean so I want to put some dust there, and then I need to put some corresponding dust on the other surface.
So my airbrush is barely blowing out because there's a bunch of dust clogged in that tip. But it's still working, just I'm almost done here. So that's the look I wanted was to get some dirt, you know, down on there and on the side so that they, they match up. All right, the prop's all done. Um, I ended up having some issues with the airbrush. It was clogging and it wasn't really spraying very well. I'd forgotten it's been doing that all week, so I gotta really take it apart and figure out what's causing that issue. So I ended up using the brush a lot more, which is simpler, and because it's such a small prop, it was just super simple to just take a little bit of matte varnish, paint it in the spots I want it, dust it, wipe it out, paint it again, wipe it out, wet it and fix any mistakes I made and go back and do it again. And then I use the airbrush just in the spots where I really wanted kind of like a, a, a kind of wetter, like a little bit muddier look than dusty, um, like in these little corners. But for the most part, I just kept it that dusty surface and it really got that look that I was trying to go for of something, you know, well handled and dirty. And I, I went with kind of a dusty rust color um, for it. I didn't put that much on these handles because that's where my hands go and I figured those would wipe it clean a lot on a prop so it shouldn't have it there it should have it everywhere else this is just a a phone case for my iphone for celebration um and it's just kind of a fun non-canon prop but it needed to be dirty doesn't matter if it's canon anyway if um you know there's probably lots of ways and lots of binders i use this vallejo airbrush color matte varnish um it's a really simple the the reason is i happen to have it and it's matte which is really nice but I'm sure there are lots of other binders that could be used. So if you use something else or do something similar to this or have another process that I should know about, please mention it in the comments. Uh, I love to share, I love to learn. So, um, you know, this, this doesn't have to be something that you only do on props going forward. I've used this technique and gone back to props that I made a couple of years ago and just added that little bit, especially uh, if you do acrylic wash weathering and deep in a crack, there's a lot of like darkness and it, is still glossy because you did a clear coat afterwards for me it just didn't always look right and so if i go in and hit that just with a little fuller's earth it gives it that matte grime right in that deep crack and it just it looks great so go back and hit some of your old props to some of your favorites and you'll you'll be amazed at what it can add even just a tiny little couple of corners of fuller's earth in there so till next time happy crafting <laughs>